This is the second in my series uh, of uh, unraveling Yeshua's hard sayings. The saying we're going to look at is love your enemies. It looks a lot more difficult to do in English than it really was in Aramaic. Now where is this quoted? Well, some scholars think that Matthew is using sayings about loving enemies from an oral Jesus tradition that employed the rhetorical and mnemonic device, you have heard it said of old times, what I say. This formula is also quoted by Luke, but with different sayings that probably represent a different oral tradition. However, the essential teaching has been transmitted in both. Even if the sayings are not identical, similar content also appears in the Didache, chapter 1. Uh, this is the Didache. It's uh, the teachings of the Twelve Apostles in this early part right now. It was probably written quite a while ago, maybe uh, at the time of the Gospels, uh, Ma Matthew and Luke, but possibly much earlier than that. And then the Didache it says, Bless those who curse you and pray for your enemies, and fast on behalf of those who persecute you. For what thanks will be due you if ye love only those who love you? Do not the Gentiles also do the same? But love ye those who hate you, and ye shall not have an enemy. So it's the, the Didache. This is an early Christian document, and this chapter was probably written about AD 80 to 90, contemporary with Matthew and Luke. That's the consensus of some scholars. Uh, I think this particular chapter is much older than that, and other scholars have confirmed that with studies showing that many parts of the Didache are very ancient, and I think this one is probably about AD 30 or 40. <clears throat> Matthew says, you have heard it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Uh, this is found in Matthew 5, in the, where the Sermon on the Mount and so on is found. Uh, here in Luke, he says, but to you who are listening, that is, paying attention, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Uh, and that's found in the sixth chapter of Luke. <clears throat> So what is the source and context of these sayings? As in other hard sayings, the essential idea of loving the enemy is preserved in the Q tradition and then expanded upon by narrators. On the right side, I show a chart you've probably seen before showing how Matthew and Luke are almost, almost identically quote a certain amount of the Greek. Uh, we find this in Matthew and Luke in the chapters that we are talking about. This particular saying uh, is about what John the Baptist had to say, but note that it is almost word for word the same. All the words in red are the same exact words in Greek between Matthew and Luke. It's almost word to word for word the same. That is material that is attributed to Q. Now, Matthew expands it with other possibly authentic sayings. Uh, and I pray for and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. I've called attention to that in red letters. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? And the word for reward uh, we will talk about later. but. Uh, it means wages for, uh, for work. Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now Luke expands it in this way. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. 
do to others as you would have them do unto you. And then in red, I call your attention to the same thing we find in Matthew. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? And the word for credit is the same word that we find in uh, Greek in Luke, meaning, uh, meaning the wages for work done. Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? That what, you, what reward is that for you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit, and again, again the word means reward, is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. This is uh, the, the same as we find in Matthew. This, this is a way of becoming children of the Most High, is, uh, is loving your enemies. Because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked, be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. <coughs> So there were Jewish precursors to these ideas. One of the core commandments of Judaism is love your neighbor as yourself in Leviticus 19.18. Now, uh, the neighbor is interpreted very often in Talmudic literature uh, and earlier as uh, your Jewish neighbor. <clears throat> but the Talmud insists with reference to Leviticus 19.18 uh, that even the criminal at the time of execution should be treated with tender love. That's found in Sanhedrin 45a. Now Rabbi Akiva, who was the generation right following uh, Yeshua, said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is the fundamental principle of the Torah. <clears throat> This commandment of love uh, is, is with the preceding sentence, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, may originally have referred and has by some scholars, like the ones talked about here, been exclusively referred to the Israelite neighbor, that is your, uh, your uh, Jewish neighbor. But in verse 34 of the same chapter, it is extended to, quote, the stranger that dwelleth with you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. Uh, you can look up the Jewish views on love in Wikipedia. <clears throat> now, ahav. This is an interesting word. The Hebrew Aramaic word for love of God and neighbor was ahava. To love meant to cherish, treasure, and esteem. There were, but there was also covenantal love for God and neighbor which is hesed, which required fidelity, justice, loyalty, and respect. Yeshua may have expanded the concept of covenantal love to all humanity, including non-Jews and enemies, as also expanded in Matthew and Q. You've heard that it was said, you shall show love, hesed, to your kinsman and hate your enemy. But I say to you, show covenantal love to your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children, that is, yeledim, newly born heirs, of your Abba in the heavens. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you show covenantal love only to those who love you, what merit, and again, this is this word mispos, meaning reward, uh, uh, wages, or translates into Hebrew shakar, earnings, consequences of work or actions. If you love only these people, uh, what merit or what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Do you greet only your brothers and sisters? What more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Abba is perfect. The Hebrew Aramaic word is Tom. <clears throat> the righteousness, uprightness, and purity of a saint or zadik, meaning whole, undivided, complete, 
and represented allegorically as the spiritually and androgynous Amba. Amba. Uh, we find this uh, <clears throat> in Matthew, and uh, we can compare it to Luke, and it's also quoted in Marcion in the Evangelion. And Paul quotes the Jewish sages in uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, for the whole Torah of law can be summed up in a single saying, and he says this in Galatians, love your neighbor as yourself. He is speaking as a Jewish rabbi, and uh, later on we will see when he talks about the peon to love, that uh, he's talking about this kind of love. So love of the enemy was considered to be basic in Christianity. In the second century, showing love to the enemy was a hallmark of Christianity, as here God says, no thanks will be due to you if you love only those who love you, uh, but thanks will be due to you if you love your enemies and those that hate you. When they hear this, they are impressed by the overplus of goodness but when they see that we do not love only those who hate us, but those who love us, they laugh at us and the name is blasphemed. This is uh, uh, spoken of in the second epistle of Clement in the second century. It has become their passion to do good to their enemies. This O emperor is the rule of life of the Christians, and this is their manner of life. Now Aristides wrote that around 137 AD. If then we are commanded to love our enemies, as I have remarked above, Tertullian says, to whom have, whom have we to hate? If injured, we are forbidden to retaliate, lest we become just as bad ourselves. Who can suffer injury in our hands? Our religion commands us to love even our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. Tertullian is pointing us out towards the end of the second century. Too bad that this uh, understanding didn't obtain through the uh, Inquisition and so on in the medieval period. <clears throat> the saying is supported by parallel teachings of Yeshua. According to Luke 10, 29 and following, Yeshua answered the challenge of a Pharisaic scriptural expert to name the weightiest commandments, which he did by quoting Deuteronomy, love God, and Leviticus, love your neighbor. The scribe then asked, who is my neighbor? Knowing that Leviticus 19.18 referred to fellow Jews, or thinking that they referred to fellow Jews. But Yeshua told a story of a Samaritan caring for a Jew who was robbed, beaten, and left for dead by bandits. Judeans despise Samaritans as false Jews, and Samaritans despise Judeans. This mashal expanded from the commandment for Jews to love Jewish neighbors, which Hillel had declared to be the fundamental proposition of religion. By interpreting the neighbor in the light of Leviticus 19.34, love foreigners as you love, and again, uh, yourselves, and the word is ahav, cherish, future, nurture, care for, treat, as you would want yourself to be treated yourselves. The Jesus seminar voted to the Good Samaritan Michelle is authentic, regardless of these facts, though some doubted that it was connected originally to the ruling of the Great Commandments, which existed separately in Mark and Matthew. Uh, in my view, it is an authentic, uh, unified pericope connected to the Great Commandments by the expanded definition of neighbor and could have easily been memorized and transmitted in the Jesus oral tradition known to the writer Luke Acts, who had access to the written sayings of Q and Mark. Uh, even though it appears only in, uh, in uh, Luke, it was decided by the Jesus seminar that it was authentic. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him for dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. 
So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. And then we have to remark that priests and Levites were forbidden from touching a corpse during their course of temple duties. So that would have been understandable. <clears throat> but a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. And then he put him in his own uh, uh, pond, his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, that's a normal day's wage for the laborer, and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I return, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And he, the scribe, said, The one who showed him mercy, and Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Now this Michelle occurs only in Luke, and it's omitted from Marcion's Evangelion, either because it did not exist in his early version of Luke, or because he had a doctrinal reason to purposely omit it. <clears throat> it's not attested in Tropius, just a martyr or other writers until Irenaeus, about AD 188. It then appears in third to fifth century gospel collections from P75, Papyrus 75, Bodmer, to both Alexandrian and Western text types. It's very little changed in these times. And the meaning is that foreigners and enemies are part of your human family. Do unto them as you would want to be done unto you. Now, in my opinion, the love sayings, all of them that are attributed to Yeshua, are probably authentic. They meet the criteria of multiple sources, orality and irony, that we find in the Jesus Seminar. They were transmitted mostly in Q or in Luke. They were paradoxical and intended to shock now, this was a characteristic of Yeshua's sayings that was deemed authentic by the Jesus Seminar, and I also like to deem it authentic. The shocking statements of Jesus um, are, appear in many different places, and that was a, a technique that was used by uh, sages to make a point. <clears throat> Although they were not included in Mark, they are referenced by many church fathers as basic to Yeshua's teaching. Love your enemies is expanded with other like sayings in Matthew and different like sayings in Luke, several of which seem to be variants of the same theme in Yeshua's teaching. I deem the paradoxical devar, love your enemies, and the other love sayings to be undoubtedly authentic. Now, uh, if we look at Paul's encomium to love, or whether it's a, a, a hymn, or whether it is a creedal statement, all we know is that most scholars consider it usually to uh, to be pre-Pauline. So the Pauline encomium may maybe reflect Yeshua's love teachings. <clears throat> the meaning is that you are in a covenantal relationship with everyone, and I would even say all beings. Show love, justice, and respect even to your enemies. You don't have to like them but always treat them with fairness, justice, compassion, and respect. <clears throat>